Hello, sumo fans. I'm Scott Finlay, and welcome to another episode of the World of Sumo podcast with me, your host, Scott Finlay, twice in one day. So I'm sitting here with Sigmund of Team Norway, um, Sigmund Weiderberg. I always destroy his name, and I'm sure he, I'm sure he enjoys <laughs> it. But he's here today to talk to us about round three of the European Cup this year in 2024, which will be held in Oslo, Norway. Sigmund, thanks so much for joining me, mate. How are you? My absolute pleasure, Scott. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure to have my name destroyed by you, as always. Uh, very, very happy to be here. Glad to be back on the World of Sumo podcast and to be able to promote our, um, I was about to say little, but it's not so little, uh, tournament that we're going to host in November. It's the first time ever we get to host a European Cup in, uh, in Norway, and we're very, yes. very excited about it. Well, mate, just when you were saying that there, you just says it not so little. So tell me about that. What's the numbers sort of looking like and how, how big is the tournament becoming? Well, that's uh, the deal with the European Cup is that it's the official ranking tournament series of Europe, which obviously like in terms of just prestige, just ups it, ups it a little uh, compared to, we have hosted tournaments, international tournaments in Norway before. Uh, we have hosted the Open Nordic Nordic Championship once per, a couple of times before, like back in the early early nineties or two thousands. And we have hosted a uh, a uh, international tournament in Oslo back in twenty seventeen. But the European Cup is a well, as an institution combined with the European Championships, it's the ranking tournaments of Europe that used to back when. Sumo is part of the World Games. It used to be the qualifier tournaments for the World Games. Now, currently, Sumo is not in the World Games anymore, but that doesn't take anything away from the status of the ranking series, which we are just very excited to be able to host um, host some home turf, finally. Uh, so that's that's why that's why it's so so big for us. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of actual numbers, it will probably, I mean, Estimating from all the European Cups we've, we've been attending and from the interest we're getting from getting from abroad, probably we're talking like a like at least uh, six to eight six to eight countries something like that with um, decent teams. I got word from Team Ukraine that they are prioritizing funding this tournament, and that is the <laughs> one of the strongest teams you'll find. Uh, all one is getting tremendous. the team together. Tremendous. Who else? Yeah, we got Poland's. Uh, we got strong indication from them. They're putting the team together. You guys are coming with a strong team from from Scotland. Fairly, fairly Let's decent go. size, decent five squad there from uh, from your end. Uh, Italy's uh, announced they're coming. Finland's coming. Uh, we're looking to get. Uh, we're looking to we're hoping to get the Danes involved. Denmark's finally got the sumo team, and we're hoping they're making their trip across the Skagerrak. Um, and of course, we are mounting a uh, massive, massive home squad ourselves. So if you got athletes in um, odd weight classes, don't you worry. We have somebody in every weight class this year. Uh, well, that's great to hear, mate. And I love hearing all of that because I tell you, Ukraine, as you said, you won't find stronger teams on earth than that come out of Ukraine. Team Poland is is an immensely strong team as well. I'm excited to see who comes with Team Poland. You know, all of us guys, we've got a sort of really good rapport going, so it's always good to see the familiar faces. And I, of course, Team Scotland will be there. First time, really, Team Scotland's going to be venturing out on a on a European front in a an officially sanctioned competition like this. So we're really excited, mate. Plus, coming to Norway, it's probably the easiest travel for us. No, as easy as they finish, but. See the guys from Finland, they're getting an easy one, aren't they? <laughs> no, I mean they bet they laugh. Oh, thank God. Because it's always the middle of Europe. Far, do you know how far Finland is away from Norway? Like it's like you got Sweden and then you got an ocean the size of Sweden, and then you got Finland. Like it's it's like way way over there. But speaking of Finland, Estonia is always also announced like they uh they're bringing right. a team. They are Very, closer, aren't they? Yeah, strong, strong squad they have there. And so it's uh, it's going it's going to be very very exciting to see and um, we obviously like there's there's many country <clears throat> many countries in Europe who's um, who's bringing athletes I mean uh, non mentioned non forgotten but uh, there will I mean I'm guessing six to eight six to eight six to nine uh, countries something like that it will be uh, and in, massive banquet afterwards as well 
I oh mate, see anything right? First, we'll get to that in a second. But anything yeah. over five countries is a bonus, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and and you're saying that obviously there'll be a massive banquet after it. Do you know it's funny because I remember at Worlds I was talking about when I do the the host the Europeans or do the next Scottish that I was want to do maybe like a banquet for everybody and and a meal like that and. No, I mean, I'm not saying that you guys are pure stealing my ideas or anything like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, we we think, I mean, we have this uh, very strongly held belief that after a good sporting event, there should be a big banquet, you know, to celebrate the camaraderie and the sportsmanship of said event. And as such... Mate, I couldn't agree more. My jokes aside, I couldn't agree more, mate. And it's exactly why I had the conversation with you about me wanting to do something like that. Because this year at the Scottish Open, as you know, I wasn't able to put anything on really after it. Um, it just wasn't financially in the cards this year for us. If we wanted to do a good event and we had to sacrifice that and and it broke my heart, mate. And that's what's made me want to go to a real effort for the next one because I just can't let it happen again. Um, so I totally get where you're coming from there, mate. So let's talk about the competition itself. So obviously taken away from the 90s and early 2000s and so what events that you had covered already, significantly in, in two decades, this this is the major one. This is really the first one. So it's a huge, huge mark in the history of the growth of Norwegian sumo because you guys are just going for strength to strength. Let's just take the worlds an example here. You guys probably had your best year Ever really yeah. at Worlds, maybe you can educate me something more, mate. And my personal knowledge, I've just never seen you guys go out and like smash it. You were hanging in there with everybody, you belong, like you now proved you, you're fighting for spots in the top five in the world. Like, so, see, when people are talking Ukraine, Georgia, Mongolia, Poland, Norway is now mentioned in that circle, mate. You're not mentioned in the next circle of people, you know, that have got the like, strong, but not the strongest. Like Team America are just about to break out of being talked about in medium strength. They're slowly becoming like, towards that next circle that you guys have just broke your way into in the discussion of who is the best in the world. And Norway is getting right up there, mate. And I love it because it gives me such fire in my belly of being so jealous I'm so jealous that it just makes me want to work 10 times harder, it inspires me. It inspires me so much to inspire everybody around about me to aim for that. Like if you're truly passionate and you really want it, it's possible. And I truly believe that, mate, because what I've done in such a short time, sometimes I'm like, is this, have I, has it really happened? Like everyone with the, like the IFS and EFS, they're talking, oh, it's going to take a couple of years. It's going to and and usually it would, but I just feel like, mate, like see if you really truly try hard and work hard, you can really get there. And you guys are a testament to that for what you've done. So I just have to commend Team Norway. I absolutely love the work you've done, and I don't want to like maybe seclude anyone else who's put the work into Team Norway. But has anyone noticed how much the level of wrestlers have been up since Sigmund stepped in as the full-time head coach? Because I have, I've noticed it and other people have noticed it as well. And that's all I'm going to say there, mate. Just tip my hat to you guys. Honestly, tremendous effort. And see now, it's just going to be another level for the fact that you are going to host this event. And I believe that's just the, the first marker and what could become a long line of you guys putting on such great events, because I know the standard is going to be another level, because that's just how you guys operate. In uh, in many respects, our um, uh, our largest quality is our quantity, in and that's uh, that's true in both in terms of leadership and coaching. Uh, coming back to the the level of athletes that we have and the the progression the progression of just quality of our top athletes from 2022 until until now, and you're right as you said that we had our best world championships ever, uh, now in 2024. But we also had our best European championships ever in 2024, and the second best world championship ever was 2023. So it's like it's been uh, it's been two very good years for us, but mainly uh, it's it's very much due to the ability we have to have a a, a large apparatus in the leadership and coaching structure that allows 
multiple individuals to focus on the stuff that they are best at. So me, for instance, I get to focus on the on the athlete development exclusively almost, uh, whereas uh, Tom and Rolf, for instance, get to focus on the uh, organizational development and the relations to the to the hosts when we're at tournament and to the to the larger sporting organizations. And uh, I and we have and we have also many other resource people around the the team structure, which allowed us to field uh, three coaches for the world championships this year. Like Eric was with me as coach for the seniors, Ramona was with me for co- coach for the juniors, and the list just goes on and on of resource people. I have to thank when it comes to building this large team, and then it's the quantity again, which really like if you have a training camp with. With 20 athletes, that is very, very significantly different from having a training camp with seven, you know? So the, this it all comes back to, like, getting those numbers up in terms of, like, like good uh, athletes who are active, actively engaged. And that's what we really succeeded with for this event in November. We're going to field a team of 44 athletes we are going to inscribe. It's for every... and. To explain, the European Cup has a maximum capped limit for every weight class. Four athletes per weight class per country is the capped limit. And for the men's, we have four athletes in every category, plus one who goes exclusively open. Uh, for the women's, oh, I, we have... I get the game. Hold on. Listen, <laughs> the Norwegians never change, do you? It's always the horde tactic, isn't it? It's always the horde mm-hmm. just... Throw bodies at them, and somebody's going to smash them. And and do you know, mate, the tactic totally works because you've you've filed out some proper gems in your team. And as you say, I, I take nothing away from everybody who puts effort into Team Norway. It is a collective like, hive that works as a cohesive unit. And shout out to Tom and Rolf because they two guys need to be commended for the, the work they put in. And as I say, mate, Ollie it, Ollie it trickles down. Ollie it's an inspiration. Like, see the work that guys like you are doing, Team Poland are doing. See with the structure that they're trying to put in place. Everybody obviously has their different tactics. But what you guys are doing is um, you sort of do everything way. And I'm not saying anybody else doesn't, but you guys do it with a level in, of integrity that has to be commended. And like I say, a lot of countries do, but you guys definitely stand out in that field with the hard work that you've put in and just the way you carry yourselves and operate. So let me go back to now, but mate, to this horde thing, because I see what you are trying to do. So basically your tactic is, oh, everybody else is probably bringing smaller teams. So on the home team, we'll just send a couple of Viking ships. Where's the long ships? Dig them out of the mud and send them forth. Ah, mate. That's so that's all right, but now you've gave away the fact that you're going to have a horde there, so I'll make sure my guys are ready. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, obviously, we, we have... I'm going to Switzerland next weekend with Eric. Uh, he's a strong medal candidate in both his weight class and in open weight. If he can manage to get... Uh, but regardless of how he does, right now we have 71 international medals in uh, 2024. Uh, if we field a team of 44 athletes for European Cup, we could, I mean, there's a chance we could break triple digits in medals. That would be in, in international medals in one year. That would be intense. But anyway, I mean, medals aside, even if they, even if every single one of ours loses, loses all their bouts, I mean, as I always tell them, I lo- I'll still love you equally. Uh, and you know, like it's genuinely like I really just appreciate I them being there because because the, you, the effect, the positive effect of being a team that can actually field forty four athletes, that's a massive statement in terms of just uh, European sports in general. Like I, the only other scenario where I've seen is when I used to play rugby back in my university days, and I played I played for Edinburgh Uni uh, the lot when I did my masters, and they have four teams, so we had 150 players in the club, and we had like for our socials after the fact we sometimes had 50, 60, 80 players going out for a social together, and when you're feeling a part of a team, of we're talking scores and scores of just your fellow athletes in your team with your uniform going out in for your social. That's a whole different team environment feeling 
than being on a squad of five or six uh, go, going going to a restaurant. And that's the type of that's the type of proper like big team mentality that we're trying to build, um, which also is something that in itself fuels the fuels the motivations for for many of our athletes, both the regardless of levels. I mate, I, I completely understand that, um, and and I and I also understand the mentality. And as I said, it's working for you guys. It's working, and it's something that other the rest of us can look at and say is that sort of attributes that we want to introduce into our own scene. And it's definitely something you know yourself, mate, that I'm working towards. Um, us in Scotland being very young in the sumo scene. I'm just enjoying the ride, mate. I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying being part of the, the sumo family within Europe and the world. Everybody's so great because we're sort of like a unique and niche community still. So there is definitely a, a, a level of camaraderie uh, within the sumo community that you don't really see in other sports. And when you can capitalise that into your personal sumo scene within your country's borders, you see results like Team Norway starting to see right now, mate. So, again, you can just be commended for that. Everyone is that put the work in. Your team's fantastic. The work you do is fantastic. All of you guys, it's tremendous. So, I'm definitely excited about this Norwegian-European Cup next month. Eh, well, not really next month. It's a month away, but it's, you know, the start of November. We're not quite into October yet. So, are you guys all prepared? Is everything in line? Or what other preparations have you guys still to do? We we are pretty good on preparations. We got the medals in the post a couple of weeks ago, so that's all sorted. The big proper fat ones with uh, engraved uh, one like what type of tournament it is, what year it is, and where it is, and that's the gold standard for engraving medals. You know, so good pro decent proper medals there. We got a nice venue uh, located close to the tournament hotel, and the tournament hotel we have <laughs> a really good deal with this conference hotel right outside of oslo which is very mm -hmm. very near to the venue where we're going to do the actual wrestling and it's it's a very fine conference hotel like the, the, the breakfast is amazing the rooms are really really nice it's the type of place where you would if you have a big company you would rent it out you know like it's it's that type right. it's that type of hotel they host peace talks there occasionally uh not to name drop what what conflicts but you know it's, it's one of those one of those venues that we managed managed to sort as the tournament hotel. They also have a very decent newly renovated nightclub for the banquet, which is yeah, just really just really excited about that. That's tremendous, mate. That's tremendous. And for a competition like this, you need to have good medals. So I'm glad to hear that you guys are happy with the medals that you have got because that's usually key as well. You don't want to begin all the way somebody coming all the way to your country and you hand them this tiny wee thing. And then not yeah. not much else, do you know what I mean? So the way you say that they're nice big medals, that's good to hear, mate. You need to try and do something, do you know what I mean, that, that sort of ties in with it or um, that you get chunk. Because the ones at the Worlds last week, I've never seen a medal last week, a couple of weeks ago. I've never seen a medal like that. I've never yeah. in person looked and seen a medal like that. I just don't know. I'm not sure if that was overkill and you should have just gave everybody a trophy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, come on. Right. <laughs> they were i mean again it's a world championship i i'm very i mean definitely the 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 upper end of the size scale for for medals you can have around your neck but yeah very very classy nice. um the 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 world championships the uh, Pol poland did the medals very very right um nice. And, I feel as uh, if it's, it's a uh, personal challenge to the rest is like see when i host the euros in 2026 here in scotland i feel like something needs to be sacrificed to make sure I can compete with the medals because how dare they serve dinner plates as medals, you know what I mean? They things were amazing. They are just standout medals that I just, it made me embarrassed for the Scottish Samoan ones and I thought I'd done all right with them. And they, they just the made names. me feel bad. Scott, they even had the names of the athletes engraved I, on the medals. I, between the time they won them and the time of presentation, I know, tremendous. Tremendous. I know, mate, it was another level. It was another level. Yeah. But I'm really excited about the Norwegian um, Cup, mate. I can't wait for round three of the Euro Trials this year. It's going to be amazing. Uh, not just because you guys are hosting it. I'm excited to come to Norway. I, you know, I'm desperate to come there. 7% Norwegian, mate. I'm basically a Viking. Do you know what I mean? What can I say? What can I say? And I just, 
I'm glad that I'm going to, because as you know, I'm going to stay an extra day because I just want to see a couple of things. I want to try a sauna in Norway. How can you go to Norway and not try a sauna? Do you know what I mean? So I'm just choking to do that, mate. I can't wait to eat. It's just going to be fun. And the flight is so short to you guys and all. Shortest flight yet, mate. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for that. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. My whole team's excited about coming over. About, you know what I mean? And as you know, I'm bringing my, one of my wrestlers who's never competed. He's only trained a couple of months. Um, he's got experience in judo, but he's I'm sure that he's 210, 210 kilo behind is going to help him a wee bit. So I'm excited to see what he does because he needs to be tested. Do you know what I mean? And just like another couple of my guys are coming out to be tested. So we'll, we'll see. It's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun. That's one of those great things about the Euro Cups as an institution is that it allows for the the four person quota per per weight class allows for you have to have this mix of everyone from fairly novice athletes to the absolute top of the of the bracket on the European stage and since it's so tightly managed, uh, like the, there's it's uh, it's all the weight classes but only the weight classes and it's four people but only four people. And then they have open weight in addition, but no teams. And it's only seniors. And that way you have a very neat package of what type of tournament it is. And we hope this can be a revitalization of the EuroCup system because it's obviously struggled a bit after to, with just finding its personality after the, after the whole uh, World Games debacle. Uh, so we hope to have this as a sort of relaunch for the for the vote the the Euro Cup system to really reinvigorate that institution as a tournament system for 2025 and the years to come, and we hope to couple it with uh, a couple of um, well, basically just some just some um, more systematizing in uh, in how you in uh, basically posing the posing the argument of why people should prioritize the Euro Cups. We hope to integrated into a multi-year uh, type of tournament series where you pick up points for every tournament and get rewarded with prizes both at the end of the year and at the end of a, say, three-year period. It's a work in progress, but uh, hopefully we, uh, we, will try, we will use this as a, as a, jump, as a jumping off point to, uh, to get that invigorating type of tournament system going. I, I mean, I, I can, you know, I completely agree with this. Me and you have discussed things like this at length about bringing more competition and more serious competition and more was, war ones worth anything like collection of points leading to an eventual bigger competition, a wee bit of prestige for your team. It all ties in. And the work that all of are trying to do, especially this side of Europe, I have never seen this side of Europe, like the north and the west side of Europe, put so much effort into actually trying to grow sumo i don't think ever since proper international sumo started so i can't tell you how great it is to see everybody putting the effort in they're putting um in your competition in november it'll be a nice nice wee cherry on the cake uh, to end the year off of just a huge line of what can only be considered some of the best and highest standard competitions held in international sumo in the last two decades Yes, the 2024 season. I mean, um, uh, we have obviously like it's. We're very happy with our results, but in general, we're just very happy with the amount of decent tournaments that's been put on mm. uh, this year. I mean, uh, I just remember back to the years uh, immediately before COVID. We're talking like 2018 and 2019, and it was hard to find more than two or three sumo tournaments in Europe where you could actually. You know, there were actually any point of turning up. Uh, you see, like the difference from that from that point until this year, where we had had, I mean, we had at least like six or seven really good tournaments, not counting the championships. And in a, and it also has fueled this uh, interest in um, tournaments for 2025, where there will be, uh, I, I mean, like uh, I've here from just from the Great Wine. Grapevine, uh, sorry, and that uh, there, there will um, there will probably be like uh, some very decent tournaments in 2025 as well. Uh, I hope that we can host one. Uh, we have that as a vague plan to host one right the the weekend after you, in a in a town where you can fly directly from Scotland. Uh, I'm not giving anything more away on that point, but we hope to have 
a uh, nice little open tournament in uh, in Norway to that we can attach to Scottish Open as a North Sea Sumo Festival. Well, again, mate, this is a continuation of something that we have talked about at length and you know I'm super excited about and I hope that it's not just us two that do this. I hope that more countries join us and it could be a like a straight, maybe over a month, just a slam of these high-level competitions, just crazy this side of Europe. And mate, it'll be amazing. You know I'm excited. But again, I don't want to say too much about it because like... People start, they, they hear stuff, they attach it, they start to put their own twists on it. And already mm. lately, something like that has come up here. So it's something that we definitely keep our cards close to our chest because we want to be able to do these things in the correct way to truly help the sport. We're here to, we're here for the sport and our love for it, do you know what I mean? And to help mm. our athletes. So I um, absolutely love that idea, mate. And you know that I'm going to be there. You know that I can't wait for it, mate. So... My team will always be there to back you guys up and support you in whatever you do because we know that we've got your support in return. Um, and it's a good thing. It's what more countries this side of the place should be doing. We should be helping each other grow like this. So that's that's truly tremendous. So, Sigmund, before we start to wrap up the podcast, mate, um, is there anything else that you want everybody to know about this tournament? And can you also give us a reminder of when and where and how everyone can go about watching it if they can't make it themselves? Ah, oh, yes, it will be. Uh, obviously, it will be streamed on um, the Norwegian Wrestling Federation's uh, platform, and you're welcome to share the stream wherever you, whatever you like, on on any. Uh, YouTube channel, uh, your YouTube channel, for instance, Scott, or um, and also any social media channel, more than welcome to share it. Uh, so it'll be streamed in a high quality, high quality broadcast uh, with the streaming equipment that we we have from Norwegian Wrestling Federation. The tournament itself will be held in Yadrum, which is right between the airport and Oslo city central uh, in the in the so it's in the Greater Oslo area, which is right next to the tournament hotel Olav's Gore, where we also will have the banquet immediately afterwards uh so all the to all the teams in europe um you can st- 5th of october is the last deadline for reg- registering athletes this will be this is one of the few tournaments that we can guarantee good athletes in every weight class it doesn't matter where you have your athletes sign them up they will get good matches and fight for nice medals um that's all that's all i need to say about the about the tournament really i hope it will be i mean it will be a really nice event. I right, mate, I think that's all you really need to say. Um, I think that's all you need to say. Uh, I think it's going to be a tremendous tournament. If people can get out there, they absolutely should. So there's no reason why um, people shouldn't be getting in contact with the Norwegian sumo team today to let them know they're wanting to send a team, register your athletes and get out there. In regards to the streaming, obviously it'll be a really high quality level uh, live stream where all of you guys can tune in. Um, I'm going to speak with the Norway Sumo team. Either I will be sharing the stream or I might even tune into theirs or set up an extra camera, stream it to my platform so there's another way to watch. We'll, we'll dis- I'll discuss that with them. But either way, you'll definitely be able to source the Norwegian European Cup Round 3 this November through World of Sumo, definitely. So stay tuned for more information on that, guys. And with that, I just want to thank you so much, Sigmund, for joining me, mate. I appreciate you coming on, talking about your amazing tournament coming up and the hopeful future a European and international sumo. Thank you, Scott. We all have to back each other up, you know. Like it's, um, uh, it's uh, we can't. No, none of us, none of us teams can be can become big and strong alone. So we, uh, as, as as we grow, we need bigger, big, strong teams all around us that we can compete with. That's the key to success. So thank you so much for all your all your support, and we can't wait to support you as well. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much, my friend. And with that, sumo fans, that's all we've got time for for this episode of the World of Sumo podcast. Sumo fans, do yourself a favor and do me a turn. Like, subscribe, hit that bell. What an agate! What an-